Welcome back everyone. In this series I'm making a 3D printed helicopter. If you haven't seen part one yet, maybe start there. Most of this won't make much sense without it. We left off last time wondering whether the system as built would survive the severe centrifugal loads of helicopter blades under normal test conditions. Before we get into the static load testing, let's chat quickly about the construction of these blades. As we saw in the last video, it's important to have aerodynamic forces behind the center of mass. In theory, the center of pressure is a consequence of geometry, so that means we can compute it directly. It also means as long as the airfoil isn't stalled, we can expect the center of lift to be consistent. We can measure the center of mass easily enough with a balance setup. Here, the blade is supported by a narrow rod. By positioning the blade carefully on the end of this rod, we can measure the center of mass. As expected, it's located at about 30% of the cord. Span-wise, the blade is nearly uniform. There are two steel bars located as close to the leading edge as geometry would allow. One is 2 millimeters, the other is 3. These sit in the chamber forward of the quarter cord. The general idea is to use higher density materials for the leading edge. Real helicopters have an erosion plate and a heating element to reduce ice accumulation in flight. They also use a tungsten weight in much the same way we're using steel here. Turns out tungsten rods are absurdly expensive, and steel is almost good enough. The airfoil itself is carbon fiber reinforced PETG. It's printed with its Z-axis oriented with the span-wise axis. This is done specifically to allow a smooth curve for the airfoil cross-section. Printing in any other orientation would cause the layer lines to introduce miniature terrace features which lead to turbulence. We want laminar flow as much as possible. There are four segments along the span, all super glued together with a carbon fiber rod as a reference point. The steel rods are embedded into the airfoil using epoxy. By slowly pushing and twisting the rods into the cavity after coating them with epoxy, there's a decent chance some of the epoxy got into the voids. I also roughed the surfaces of the steel rods with 80 grit sandpaper to help with epoxy adhesion. Did it make a difference? Yes. With the final mass of 75 grams each, the blades will experience about 5 kilograms effective force at 250 RPM. This is the lowest speed I expect to generate meaningful airflow through the system. At the max speed of 500 RPM, the blades would experience 19 kilograms effective force. That requires a facility with concrete walls, so we're not quite ready for that. With a little static load testing, we can be relatively sure that the epoxy will hold. So I found something in my house weighing roughly 5 kilograms. Turns out a Staub Dutch oven is pretty close. Adding in the clamp and some carabiners, we have a proper test weight. In this case, I used some 22 gauge stainless wire to fashion a loop for the carabiner. The idea is to dangle a weight from the clamp via carabiner and use the wire loops through the blade root clamp to fasten to the other carabiner and hang the whole mess on a scale. I had to support the clamp with the box to keep everything in line, otherwise I had a bunch of bending stresses on the blades. But all the tests were nominal. None of the parts failed due to being loaded in this way. So I assemble everything. Before I could give it a low speed spin test though, I realized a flaw in the blade clamp design. Pretty much immediately after assembly, they droop to the sides. Turns out the 5mm shaft I used for the upper rotor isn't nearly strong enough. Just sitting on the tripod, it almost falls over and breaks. There's also not enough separation between the rotors, so the tips collide and that is no good. So I designed a new hub with more rigidity. This time I made hex socket shapes for the shafts, gears, and hubs. This way things can be assembled more easily and with more consistent torque transfer. Set screws love to slip under load. I fixed the issue with the blade clamps and now the blades spin freely from each other. 
without drooping. However, the whole thing needs a more rigid mount. The camera mounts that I have are just not designed for the size I need to hold everything together for the spin test. That did not stop me from some low speed tests. Let's just say the tripods are really important for stability. <laughs> um, that's all I have for this video though. With any luck, the next one will have some pretty footage to look at. Or possibly some slow motion footage of the rotors exploding violently. I <laughs> uh, hope not. The whole point is to learn. Sometimes that involves watching your hard work fly apart and make friends with the wall. Ooh. However you do it, remember, when mistakes are welcome, growth is guaranteed.